You know, they say that life is uncertain so that we should eat dessert first and today we're starting the show with dessert and it's a really special cookie recipe that comes from Will and Shauna Putnam of the R&R &R Bakery in Marshall, Texas and these are called R&R &R Bakery Magical Cookies and I have a really special guest right here who's excited to help me make this recipe. Hey, can I introduce you to everybody? Is that alright? What's your name? This is Kylie Letterman, and she's here with her mom, who happens to be a physician, Dr. Alona Pulde. Dr. Pulde, along with her husband, Dr. Matt Letterman, is the author of Keep It Simple, Keep It Whole, and the New York Times best-selling The Forks Over Knives plan. Did you know that your mommy and daddy wrote this? Mm -hmm. That's great. How old are you, Kylie? Three. Three? Okay, three, three and a half. Have you ever made cookies before? No. Well, would you like to help me? Thanks. Would you mind putting some gloves on? So what I have here are six cups of oats. I'm using gluten-free oats. I'm adding two cups of a non-dairy chocolate chip. I'm using the grain sweetened ones. One and a half cups of dried fruit. I'm using cherries unsweetened and unsulfured. I'm gonna add a half a tablespoon, which is one and a half teaspoons of roasted cinnamon. I've got a 24 ounce jar of applesauce, unsweetened of course. One tablespoon of alcohol-free vanilla and one jar, 16 ounces of unsweetened, roasted, but unsalted peanut butter. Kylie, do you like the ingredients that we're using on these cookies? You do? Would you mind helping me mix them? Because this is a very important job. And when you mix these for me with your gloves, I'm gonna ask mommy a couple questions, okay? Go ahead, just have fun. Excellent. And mommy can help if you need. So, Dr. Pulde, yeah, go. good job. That's, that's, that's like that. just how you do it. <laughs> and then we're gonna get to eat the cookies. Boy, I would probably recommend a bigger bowl if you do this at home. So you're raising your kids very healthy. Kylie's three and a half. You have another adorable daughter, Jordan, who's two. And they've been right. raised on a plant-based diet since birth, right? They have. You're also a medical doctor specializing in family practice. So what do you say to people who say, oh, well, I can't raise my kid on a plant-based diet. Where are they going to get their protein? They need to drink milk for calcium. I mean, you've written a best-selling book basically saying that you don't have to do that, but what would you say to our viewers who are parents who are concerned about these issues and the efficacy of raising their kids on a plant-based diet? I assume you follow one yourself. Yes, we do. Um, I do, my husband does, and my two daughters, um, Kylie and her sister Jordan. And um, it's interesting that people have a lot of concerns about eating, um, eating a plant-based diet, but when you really break it down, what you're eating is fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, starchy vegetables. I mean, these are some of the healthiest foods mm -hmm. that we have. And it is a, a concern. You know, when I first started this diet, I too was worried about where am I going to get my protein, where am I going to get my calcium. And it's so surprising um, how much calcium, how much protein is in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes. So much so that you don't have to worry about it at all. If you're eating um, the calories that you need, you're going to get the nutrients that you need. May I ask how long have you and your husband been following this way of eating? About 10 years. That's fantastic. I assume this is not something you learned, both of you learned in medical school? No, we did not. We got very little nutrition education in medical school, unfortunately. Wow. Please feel free to take your gloves off. So what made you and your husband, Matt, who's also a medical doctor, internal medicine, I believe, decide to transition yourselves to a plant-based diet before even having children? Yes, yeah, so Matt, my husband, actually had um, some personal health issues that he was exploring, um, treating in alternative ways, and he came across plant-based nutrition, and that was the first thing that he thought, how am I going to get my pro, I'm not going to be able to survive on this. Um, and for a week, I think, he ate just beans and rice. <laughs> and, uh, try, and he tried every avenue to prove that this diet would not work for him. Mm -hmm. um, but the more he did it, the better he felt, uh, the more energy he had, the more vibrant he felt, his uh, health issues went away, and he felt so great. And as he was learning that, I met him kind of um, 
along his path of discovery. And uh, for me, it was a little sadder story. I lost my dad in my second year of Sorry. medical school. And he um, was doing everything right. He was on the Mediterranean diet. And I couldn't figure out what happened. And when I started exploring the nutrition and lifestyle uh, medicine, I really realized this was the component that was missing. This is, mm -hmm. uh, this is it. This right. is what people really need to know right. to be healthy. Well, I don't know how old you guys are. We're talking about being healthy at every age. But both you and your husband, to me, you guys look like you're in your 20s. So Kylie, you know what you do after you mix it? You take this scoop. And then what we do is we measure it perfectly like this, and we put it on the baking sheet, and then we take our hand, I don't have my glove, and you press it down just like that. Wow. Pretty cool, huh? And then we bake it. And we're not going to have time to bake these right now, but we did bake some up, and we're going to show you what they look like when they're done. I want to thank Will and Shauna Putnam from the r, &R Bakery for letting us use this recipe. If you're ever in Marshall, Texas, East Texas, they have healthy <sighs> vegan options on their menu every day. You bake them for 15 minutes on one side, flip them over another 15 minutes, and they look amazing and taste even better. Would you like to taste a cookie? Okay, how about tasting one? Maybe mommy will too. Tell me what you think, because if you cheers. like it, if a kid likes cheers. it, then maybe I'll get other people to like it too. Mm. Good? Your husband loves these, I know. He loves Delicious. them frozen. Delicious and healthy. No sugar. Unbeatable. No, no oil, no salt, amazing. No, no flour. What do you think, Kylie? Because there's maybe kids watching. Would you think a kid would like this? Yeah? Good. So what do you like to do? What, do you, what are your favorite foods that mommy makes? Do you eat pretty healthy? Yeah? Do you like having cookies for breakfast? Yeah. <laughs> when they're this healthy, you can, right. right? Well, we just proved it. You can give your kids a cookie and not feel guilty about it. Thank you so much for getting the word out there to, you know, through your books. I know you have another book coming up, right, that's really going to drive this home. Yeah, we do. It's a family book, and it talks just, it is just about that, how to make this practical, how to bring it into your homes for your family, for your kids. Yeah. If people wanted to find out more about you and your husband and the work you're doing, is there a website? Is there a way they can? Because I know you were in the movie Forks Over Knives. Great movie, by the way, if you haven't seen it. Yeah, ForksOverKnives.com will definitely have information about our upcoming book. Great, great, great. Well, thank you so much. And hey, hey Kylie, thanks for helping me make the cookies. I hope you had some fun. Thank you, AJ. Good. Do you, do you think you're pretty healthy? Yeah, you look good to me. <laughs> All right. Well, come right back because we're going to prove to you that eating this way, you can be healthy and look great at every age. Welcome back to Healthy Living. Today we're talking about how eating a plant-based diet can make you healthy at any age so that you really look and feel your best. And joining me in the kitchen is Linda Middlesworth. Linda is a PCRM, which stands for Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, food for life cooking instructor, a personal trainer, and an aerobics instructor. So thank you so much for being here, Linda. You're welcome. Nice to be here. Well, what we're doing is we're making one of Linda's favorite recipes because I'm responsible for buying Linda her first Instant Pot electric pressure cooker as a gift. It's not that she doesn't know how to cook. She's a fabulous cook, but she's busy like most of us. And she absolutely loves my split pea soup, which we're going to make today, but with two additions that were Linda's idea. So here we go. So in the pressure cooker, we have eight cups of no sodium vegetable broth, which I, by the way, make myself in the pressure cooker. If you haven't done that yet, you have to try. I have to learn. Well, it's really easy, Linda, because anytime you have scraps, the peel of the onion or the head of a celery, you just throw it in with eight, 10 cups of water, a few spices to your liking, and in 10 minutes you have free broth, which is great. Cheaper, too. Absolutely cheaper. Those boxes can cost $4 each. And who wants to pollute the environment with all that packaging? So we've got the eight cups of no sodium vegetable broth in the pressure cooker. I'm adding one pound of split peas, which you can buy in bulk. I've seen as low as 49 cents a pound. So when people say it's too expensive to eat healthy, not if you're cooking this way and buying your foods in bulk. We have got what's called mirepoix. It's a French word for onion, celery, carrot, which you can actually buy pre-chopped and assembled at many stores. It's the equivalent of two carrots, one onion chopped, and one bunch of celery. So lots of good, healthy vegetables in the soup. Next we have two potatoes. This looks like a little bit more, but who cares? We love potatoes. Uh -huh. By the way, both Linda and I used to be considerably overweight. The more potatoes we eat, the thinner we get. Yep. Mm -hmm. So these are Yukon Gold because I happen to like them, but you could use any potato you like. What would any soup recipe be without fresh garlic? Eight cloves, more or less to your liking. Now, this was Linda's addition to the recipe, which I think made it so much more delicious. And I will never go back to this way of making it. Mm -hmm. Two cups of 
finely cut or julienne cut sun-dried tomatoes, the kind without salt and oil. This gives it like a toothsome, chewy, it just makes it so delicious. I'm so grateful for you for that. And to boost the nutrition and also just for some added texture, a cup of dried criminy mushrooms. I almost forgot one of the most important ingredients, the spices. Now this is a technique that I don't want to say invented, but came up with. You know, we use so many different spices and when we're done, a lot of times people just throw the jars away. So when I'm finished with a certain spice, I put it in my dishwasher so that the label comes off and I use them for all my soup recipes or stews or chilies. That's you know, a good idea. Well, cause you know, research shows that people <laughs> don't eat seven distinct breakfast, lunch and dinners every day. We tend to repeat our family's favorites and this split pea soup is no exception. I could eat it every day. Thank you for saying that. So there's eight different spices in here. And if I come home late for work and you work all day too, last thing we want to do is measure out the spices. So instead of measuring out eight different spices every time I make it, all I have to do is open the cabinet, make sure I pull out the right jar for the right recipe <laughs> and dump it in. We have in here smoked paprika, really important to use smoked instead of the regular. Would, would you put split pea soup on that? Jar. Yes, yeah, actually, I would label it exactly. Mm -hmm. I would get a label and label it because you don't want to have like your, ch you know, the wrong spices for the wrong thing. But we've got about eight spices in there. We've got some rosemary, some dried parsley, oregano, basil, a bay leaf, smoked paprika, Benson's table tasty, my favorite salt free seasoning, celery. And it's just easier to do this in advance. And I do this with all my recipes. Like that. I'm just going to put it on high pressure for 10 minutes doing it a couple minutes longer because it is such a full pressure cooker. Set it, forget it, now walk away. So you look beautiful. Oh, thank you. How old do most people guess you are? 50, 55, somewhere in there. Okay, well that's my age. Would you mind me telling the viewers that you're almost 72 years old? I don't mind, I'm almost 72 years old. <laughs> <laughs> and that you work full time as a personal trainer and an aerobics instructor teaching yeah. Pilates and step and I've never seen anybody Kickboxing. exercise that. What do you attribute your longevity, your health, and your beautiful figure too. My diet is yeah. completely about food. It's the food, it's the food. I have people in my classes who say, I just need to exercise more. But in reality, I, I was an aerobic instructor with 25 classes a week and I was an overweight, fat aerobic instructor. Mm -hmm. It was the food uh, that changed my life because I was a, an aerobic instructor and I, we all need aerobic instruction. Mm -hmm. We all need to do our muscle weights very important for our healthy lifestyle. But it wasn't until I changed my food to healthy, whole foods, plant-based eating mm -hmm. without the oil, right. without the sugar, and without the salt that I actually was able to take off all the weight. And how did, much was that about? Almost 50 pounds. And we're going to show you a picture of what she looked like before. But you also had some health challenges. It wasn't just aesthetic for you. Absolutely. I had heart disease, cancer, and the 50 pounds overweight. So. It was terrible. I should be dead now, but unfortunately, I found Dr. John McDougall in time Love and started him. to change yeah. my lifestyle. Right, right. Well, it's going to take a little longer for the soup to be ready. So I knew you were coming, and I knew you loved it. So we cooked the batch. This is why it's great to not just have one Instant Pot, but to have two, and I do. As you know, it will thicken. As it cools, it will be even thicker the next day. But look at how hard. Oh, it smells so good. If they could just smell it. The sun-dried tomatoes real and the big chunks of potatoes. Look at that. <sighs> this, then tell me, does this taste like yours? Or you can say it's better if you want. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Make sure you blow. Definitely don't want to burn yourself. Oh, man. That's good. You know, Linda, I volunteer at hospitals, nursing homes, and assisted livings. And there are patients there that are 20 years younger than you that don't look like you, that don't feel like you, that are taking 18 and 20 medications for preventable lifestyle diseases. You're a living example that you can thrive and, and be gorgeous as a septuagenarian. How can we get this information out to those people? Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine has instructors like myself for nutrition and cooking all over the United States and in the world, actually. So every major city, you can find an instructor like myself. We, we teach diabetes classes, weight loss classes, cancer classes, and kids classes. Well, cancer prevention classes. Cancer right? prevention. <laughs> Last thing we need is a class. Prevention and survival, yes. And, and what is your personal website if people want you as their mentor or coach? Because I would imagine somebody <clears throat> that's in their 70s, you would be very inspirational to. It's veganmentor.com. And you can find my meetup at Sacramento Vegan Society Meetup. Wow. Well, we I'm, have almost 2,000 people in there. 
well, I hope I look and feel like you when I'm your age. You're just, you're beautiful inside and out, and I'm so glad you came and sh shared us the additions to the recipes you made to make it even more better. Thank you, Chef AJ. Well, you are so welcome. Be sure and come right back, because if this 72-year-old mm -hmm. babe didn't knock your socks off, mm -hmm. I have a centenarian who I'm sure will. Joining me in the kitchen is Dr. Ellsworth Wareham, a retired cardiothoracic surgeon from Loma Linda, California, who performed open heart surgery until he retired at the age of 95. Welcome, Dr. Wareham. Thank you. It's such an honor to have you here. Before I interview you, I'm so excited to hear what you have to say about the secret to your longevity. I'd like to make a quick recipe that I think will help other people eat healthier. And I know you have a lovely wife, Barbara. You live in Loma Linda, and this would be a really easy, entertaining recipe. I know that um, a lot of people in Loma Linda eat nuts, very good health benefits that have been associated with the Adventist Health Study. So we're using, in your honor, some nuts. We're using pine nuts, a cup of Mediterranean pine nuts. We're adding a cup of herbs called fresh basil, which is delicious, two cloves of garlic, the bigger the better in my opinion, half a cup of fresh lemon juice, and a tablespoon of miso paste. This is a fermented product. I get the lowest sodium one I can find. Put it all in the food processor fitted with the S blade. And that's it. So what I've made here is a pesto. Have you ever had pesto before? had from time to time. Right. Yeah. And traditionally, it's made with a lot of olive oil. Now, I know you're a big fan of our mutual friend, Dr. Caldwell B. Esselstyn, yeah. and he recommends, especially for people with heart disease, not a drop of oil. And that's true. Right. So what we can do here to still get a creamy, delicious, rich flavor is use these Mediterranean pine nuts. So I'm just stuffing these mushrooms, and what I've done is I've taken the stem out, I'm going to stick them in the oven in just a second at 350 degrees for about 45 minutes. You could use a food dehydrator. That's how actually I make them at home because then I can, I, I like machines that I can set and forget and don't have to babysit. But the filling is as rich and creamy and delicious as any oily pesto you've ever had. And company loves these. Even regular people that don't eat like us seem to really, really enjoy this recipe. And if for some reason you didn't like basil or couldn't eat it, you could always use parsley. You could use any kind of herb, really, you like. But basil is traditional in pesto. We've got the garlic. Not a very difficult recipe to make. And um, actually, Dr. Esselstyn came to my house for dinner. We served these, and his wife, Anne, ate 12 of them. So that's how good they are. There we go. What I have on this baking sheet is a nonstick silicone baking mat, so I don't have to clean it. I can reuse it. Stick it in the oven, and now we can talk about you. Would you tell our viewers how old you are, Dr. Wareham? Well, uh, I'm 100 and uh, about eight days, I'll be 101. So you're almost 101. So we're talking today about being healthy at any age, and you obviously are extremely healthy. You're almost 101 years old. Congratulations, by the way. If you had to say in one word what you attribute your success and ability to look this good and feel this good at 101, what would, word would that be? Uh, I would say lifestyle. And how is your lifestyle different than, say, the average American who's popping 20 pills a day, who's sedentary and overweight and has heart disease and diabetes and all kinds of things? Well, uh, it would be uh, my diet. And what diet might that be, I wonder? Uh, a whole plant. <laughs> That's my boy. And, that, and I, now, I thought that I was the oldest vegan, not oldest, but I thought I had been vegan longer than anybody because it's almost 40 years for me. But you've got me beat, Dr. Wareham. How long now has it been since you've been following a whole food plant-based diet? I suppose probably the latter part, half of my life. So about 50 years. Yes. So it's never too late to... It was a, it was a gradual thing, right. you know. Right. You, you, had, you were instrumental in creating the cardiothoracic surgery program at Loma Linda, am I correct? Right. You actually were the creator of it. Yes, I started the cardiothoracic surgery program at Loma Linda. That is quite an accomplishment, just in itself. Well, it just so happened that I was on the scene when open heart surgery came in. Mm -hmm. I was a senior resident uh, in New York when the first open heart surgery was done in 1953 using the Heartland machine. Wow. 
done by Dr. Gibbon in Philadelphia. And I said, well, that's the coming thing. I prolonged my training for a year and a half to get some knowledge of this. And so I was one of the first people to do open heart surgery. If you had to guess how many operations you've performed, what would it be? In the thousands, I imagine. Well, one's inclined to set the figure high. Right. But uh, three or four cases a week. That's how many of those cases do you think could have been avoided entirely if people would eat a whole food plant-based diet like you and I eat? Well, um, one must consider that when you're talking about open heart surgery, you're talking about different types mm -hmm. of lesions, like there's congenital, sure, and, the and things that you're born with. Of course, with, and I don't mean those, but I mean like when uh, people have coronary... Then uh, when you get into the acquired heart disease... That's what I mean. Uh, then there's rheumatic fever with rheumatic uh, mitral stenosis and valve stenosis and things like that. Uh, actually, coronary bypass grafts... That's what I'm talking about. Uh, was one of the later mm -hmm. operations. It's a simple operation, mm -hmm. and it's interesting that it was one of the later ones that we did. We did a lot of complicated operations before we did coronary bypass surgery. But what I'm trying to ascertain is the people that are having these more recent coronary artery bypass grafts, how many of these people possibly could have avoided surgery if they would have followed a healthier lifestyle? Well, a very high percentage. High, thank you. Uh, that's thank right. You. As you know, Dr. Esselstyn of the Cleveland Clinic and Dr. Ornis of San Francisco have written books on the prevention yes. and reversal of coronary artery disease. Absolutely. And have. Dr. Esselstyn says that it need not exist, coronary artery disease. Right. And if it does, it need not progress. He absolutely, and I absolutely believe him, and I think one day other people will believe him. Why do you think doctors are so reticent to accept this information that you can not only reverse heart disease, in its tracks, but actually prevent it with the type of diet style that you and I eat and recommend? I would have to say that medical doctors as a group are not very prevention oriented. Mm -hmm. Not in this country anyway, right? You know what I mean? And they, they really are not informed, and if they are, they don't act on it. Even if you have coronary artery bypass graft surgery, that's not a cure, correct? I mean, that, if you don't change your lifestyle, you well, still can progress. President Clinton is an example of this. And uh, he had bypass grafts done in 2004, mm -hmm. 2010. He had a recurrence of his angina symptoms. And uh, he realized that he was going to be going through this again. Right. So it was then, you see, that he got the word that if you get on this Low fat. Low fat. Low fat. Vegan. Vegan. You can't do it with lacto ovo vegetarian. Absolutely. Has to be vegan. Yep. Because the animal proteins will raise your cholesterol as well as the animal fats. We didn't used to dwell on that. You know, you pour the fat off the milk and drink the skim milk, mm -hmm. you'll be all right. You cut the fat off the meat and eat the lean meat. But now we know that the animal proteins are bad too. So you're left with getting rid of it altogether. And I agree with you, but there seems to be so much conflicting information from other sources that putting butter in coffee is good or eating a paleo diet with just animal protein is good and the cholesterol means nothing. You spent your whole life till the age of 95 working with these types of cases. How would you address that when people say, no, no, eat all, eat all the meat you want, drink all the milk you want. <laughs> Just don't eat grains, don't, you know? <laughs> well, we're dependent on people like Dr. Esselstyn for the hard information. Right. You know, people will say, I changed my diet and immediately I was, felt better. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean a thing. Yeah. You can feel better by just taking and changing your attitude, as you know. But you don't change your cholesterol <laughs> by changing your attitude. If only. <laughs> now, if you keep your cholesterol above 150, Mm -hmm. The chances of you having a heart attack are practically zero. If you keep it below 150 or above? You keep your cholesterol below, below 150, uh, 150, right? Mine's 99, so I think I'm okay. Oh, say. Hey, my LDL's 57. Yours is better than mine. Mine's oh. 117. Really? Well, when you get it down to 99, you can be That's on the right. show again. Yeah. Well, you <laughs> know, they kidding. say at the Framing Heart, heart Institute, Framingham, Framingham yep. Heart Institute, they have not seen 
a heart attack with a person under 150 cholesterol. That's, is that medicated or unmedicated, or does it matter? Well, it's off medication. Off medication. That's fantastic. So tell me a little about your lifestyle. You, you retired about five years ago. You were still actively practicing open heart surgery. What made you decide to retire at 95? Because I wanted to spend a little bit more time at home. <laughs> that makes sense. So <laughs> how do you spend your days? Do you, are you active? Do you exercise? Do you, what do you do all day? Well, uh, I was glad to hear it mentioned here about exercise. Yeah. I'm not a big exercise. That's okay. You look great. Well, anyhow, I think that what you're eating has a lot more to do with it. Absolutely. Now, I do have built-in exercise. I have a two-story house. Up and down the steps multiple right. times a day. That's right. The people at Stanford put out a paper about 20 years ago. And their research was that if you climb a flight of stairs three times a day, you know, yeah. that isn't very often. No. You will cut your incidence of dying of heart disease by 46%. So everyone, we must move into a two-story two house. house. But you lead an active lifestyle. <coughs> You're not sitting at the... If on the couch all day watching TV, I imagine. No, but I should exercise more. Okay. I know what the statistics are, right. and it's important mm -hmm. to exercise. Absolutely. So is there anything that you can't do at 101? You know what I mean? <laughs> well, I shouldn't go get into detail, but very little. <laughs> I uh, don't walk with a cane. Right. You know what I mean? I have no tr trouble with balance or anything That's like that. That's fantastic. Uh, I'm essentially the same as when I was, say, 50, except I lack physical endurance. The length of time I could stand up here or do any task would be limited. That's OK. Well, you, you, you look good to me. That's all I can <laughs> say. And it's, it's just been such an honor. Thank you so much, Dr. Wareham. Be sure to come right back when I take those delicious pesto stuffed mushrooms out of the oven and show you all the recipes that if you eat, you'll be healthy and thriving at any age.